Hello and welcome to another edition of Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Vanelli. Now, our topic today is how to create different styles fast and very instantly. Um, just get that look and feel that you're going for. Now, we've talked about this before. A style is, is a personal choice. So some of the stuff that I may be editing, it may not be your style. You may not like that style, and that's okay. The concept is what I'm trying to show you, is how to create the style and how we're going to use some of the new AI tools to make it really fast. And once you get a style, then you stick with it for a while and people start to recognize you based on, quote, your style. All right? Well, let's jump right in. Hello, everyone. And by the way, if you like what you're seeing, please, please give it a thumbs up. Um, you know, in the and, and leave comments below. Good. So I'm seeing a lot of people in here. Awesome. And yes, some of you got a little pleasant surprise. Luminar shipped a little bit early. We're rolling it out to different parts of the world. And some of you received it before the 10th for the ones that pre-ordered. The 15th is the scheduled date. All right. So let's jump right in. I'm going to start with this image here. Now, I like it. It looks really nice. Make sure there's no before and after. Good. What I want to do is use the power of AI to help me to develop this image and give it a look or a style. All right. Already it's telling me nature, filmatic, and blockbuster are some of the suggestions. So I'm going to click on nature because it, we do have some uh, landscape stuff in here and we have a person. The black and white stuff always looks great. I love it. But let's just stick to the color ones for now. Ooh, this looks neat. Ooh, look at that. All right. So before, after. And don't forget we can come down here and apply a global adjustment to all the tools that were used in this. Well, that one looks good. I'll put that in the back of my mind. I like that. Just, ooh, that looks good too. Good. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to go through and just quickly try, oh, I like this one a lot. Actually, you know what? That one we're going to start with. I want to favor it because I like how this looks as a base, I'm going to keep it in my favorite group. So when I come over here, it's instantly right here when, when I'm going through the editing. So I'm going to click edit. Now I want to tweak it just a little bit. Uh, let's see. I like how it is here since there's a person in the scene. Let's make sure there's some portrait being applied. Sure enough, we'll apply a generous amount of skin and let's come up to the face. That's relighting the face. I want to add it just a little bit. Eyes, I always love making them look a lot better. Remove some of the dark circles under the eyes. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can see. And by the way, if you notice, oh, <laughs> there we go. Zoom in, got it. Now, if you notice up in the corner here, if you saw that um, blue um, going back and forth, illuminating, it means it's thinking. So now that, re now that it refreshed the screen, we have the eyes down. That looks good. I'm going to come over to the essential tools again. And let's just add a little more, a little sharpness to it, or bring out the details. Well, that looks good. And last, let's say um, the enhancer. So uh, Accent AI is my absolute favorite. All right, I like it there. And I did apply a vignette. Let's see the difference. Yep, the vignette's making a difference. So it's bringing it in. So let's make it a little bit smaller and feather it. All right. So, this one right here, notice, 
Oh, let me do before and after. Look at that. It, that right there just developed the image. So it just made the image look better. I didn't do any drastic changes to it. I didn't add um, a color effect to it. This right here, I think, will be a very good starting point for a lot of the regular photos that I take. So I'm going to come down to the bottom here, and I want to save it. So now that I saved it, let's see if I can rename it from here. Nope. All right, so I saved it here, and now I want what I want to do is come back to the templates, and under my collection, that was favorites, user templates, the one we just created, I'm going to come in, and I want to edit re or rename it. And maybe this would be a good uh, starting uh, portrait, or let's say, out a uh, good starting point. Good. So now I know that that's, a, that's my go-to for a starting point. All right. Well, that's good. Let's go back to the catalog. This is the one I really want to work with. Now, from here, we'll use templates again. And let's see what it's suggesting. All right. Move it up a little bit. There we go. I knew it was going to pick black and white because that would look good. All right, and close-ups. Let's see what close-up does. Oh, look at that. I love that. I'm putting that in the back of my mind. Brush-up looks really cool. Nice. Ooh, focus looks good, too. What about midday? Oh, man, midday looks really good, too. Oh, this one here, I'm going to make it my one of my favorites. So I like that. And let's use, all right, let's use um, featured, featured uh, faces. All right. Come back in. So I have that set. And you'll see where I'm heading with this in a moment. So now that we have this, I'm going to make just a slight tweak. That's good. I mean, everything else looks really good. I mean, there's not a whole lot I'd want to change. Look at that. I, I, I just like how the look of it is coming in. Now I'll come down here, save it, and we'll come back to templates. And here it was. Edit. Oh, I didn't want to edit. What I wanted to do was rename it. There we go, rename. All right, and let's call this um, like 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 almost like a vintage, yeah, a vintage. Not like a vintage. There. All right. Now, imagine we if we did an entire shoot with them on the train tracks. Like this one right here, let's say, would be another one that would look good in that with that shoot. So let's say this one, this one, and this one, we really want to put together in a sequence. Well, now if I just right click, click adjustments, synchronize, these are going to be synchronized to the to this image that has the blue around it. So let's look at it. So here's before, still thinking. Almost done, there we go. Before, after. Good, one more time. We have it. And then this one here. Ooh, this would do a few, a few different things with it too. But you get the idea. So the concept of what I'm getting at is you come up with a look and feel and, and if you are the type that say, say, hey, I'm a photographer. I don't want all that fancy sports grit look. Um, you know, the the muted colors. I want to see it as if I were to bring it to a photo lab. They processed it and hand it back. And there's nothing wrong with that. So you can create styles based on that. Then you could also create styles 
like the sports grit look or the aggressive type, and I hate to use the word Instagram, you know, that Instagram look where you look at the photo and say, yeah, there's been a lot of editing to this image, and that's okay. The point I'm getting at is you need to come up with a look the, or the, the style that fits, your, that fits you. So if you post all this image, these images on social media and we start flipping through, boom, you should be able to look at your style. Now, if you don't have a style yet, that's understandable and it's okay. It takes, it could take years to develop them. Look at other photographers. Look at some of the styles that they have and dare I say it, copy it. Copy the style and then gradually make it your own. And then you'll start to notice, oh wow, when I go out shooting, I'm photographing these types of images. Here's my style. I have a real good friend of mine in, in England who does a lot of rugby photos. His shots look so amazing, he motivated me to want to go out and photograph rugby and then add my style to it. Uh, Nicole Young photographs amazing landscapes and uh, brooks and running um, waterfalls and running streams. That motivated me to want to go out and photograph those types of images until I found out a lot of that stuff is a hiking trail and it takes you like two or three miles to get into it to photograph them. So that kind of deters me from some of that, but I love the style of it. So again, learn and pick images that you like that you can start applying to your style. All right, well, let's look at some of the comments real quick. Uh, let me pull this image back up. Well, I'm looking off to the side. Oh, and by the way, before I kick on the comments, well, some of the comments, um, don't forget, look what's happening coming up tomorrow. All right, we have Luminar Live. Let's see. I thought I had this already up for you. Um... Luminar Live event right here. There it is. All right, coming up tomorrow, Luminar Live will be happening. And you just come over here and you register it. Register. Again, go to skyland.com forward slash Luminar dash live. And you can register. And here are the guest speakers. We have our very own Alex Tespo, which is our CEO. He'll be talking. Elia Lacardi will be giving the keynote. We have Rich Harrington, um, Victor from Fuji, and then Lucy. So there's a lot of great people coming in. And then this is going to be the event or the scheduling of it. So check that out. And yes, a lot of, well, I shouldn't say a lot of you, but there's a small handful of people that received Luminar ahead of time because we're rolling it out, testing it out. Um, the, the rollout feature, it just goes out to different parts of the world. And then obviously, since we live here in the United States, we're gonna re you're gonna receive, some of you that are overseas, will receive it on the 10th or the 12th, try it again, the 15th, um, when it's still the 14th over here, so you'll get first dibs at it. Um, if you already pre-ordered Luminar, before the certain cutoff date, you'll also be receiving it. And like my buddy um, made a comment here, Russell, he found it. If you go to Skylum.com and you log into your account right here. Now this, this I think is comical. Here's my software and look, <laughs> let me share my screen. So I'm the director of education, and it says to me, uh, your pre-order of Luminar for five devices, the download link will be available after the release date. So, <coughs> so it shows no favoritism. <coughs> so even I, um, you know, I have the beta versions, of course, but even I have to wait until after the 15th to get my hands on the, um, the actual copies. I thought that was comical. 
when I saw that, that my buddy got it before me. Um, so again, so you, just, you go to your, your account, log in, and it'll tell you here if it's ready for download. And they made it so much easier and faster for you to um, download it and get it installed. All right? So let's check out. Let me do this. Yeah, let me check out some of the questions. Oh, good. Rick brought out a good point and said, in fact, you know what I'm going to do? Let me bring this over. All right, guys. So Rick brought out a good point. Yes, it would be good to see a session in a workflow. Um, perfect. Uh, you know, when in the sky can be done first. Good. So he's, he's talking about workflow to where is there a set order? Now, what's really cool and I love about Luminar, especially Luminar AI, as an educator, we don't have to teach in sequence. We don't have to say, all right, everyone, step one, do this. Step two, do this. Step three, do this. Oh, but Mr. Vanelli, I'm on step one. It didn't work for me. What's really cool about it is you can go out of order and add it to your heart's content. If you decide at the very end, oh, I wish I cropped it, crop it. It's not going to affect different things. If you wished um, you changed the, the the vignette, you know, during parts of the image, you wish you didn't put that strong of a, of a vignette, you go back to it and you just change it. So you're not set in an order. You could change it up. But yes, that, that's something good we can still talk about um, on a best practice workflow. All right. Let me go up a little bit. So thank you, Rick, for that. Uh, good. Uh, is your Thursday Luminar Live? Yes, Luminar Live will be recorded. And I'm not sure where. Oh, there. Kevin, thank you for answering. Um, yes, it will be recorded. Um, OK. Photo Gen X. Oh, are you for Photo Gen uh, Are you? on Windows or are you on a Macintosh computer? So let me know real quick. So check, let me know real quick. It, well, I'll tell you right now, if you're on a Windows computer, Photo Gen X, make sure all, uh, all the software, everything on your computer is closed. Launch the program. And if you're on Windows, let me show you, um, relaunch after you install it, relaunch Luminar, but right click, come over to Luminar, right click, and run as an administrator. That's very, very important. So run as an administrator. Yep, there you are. Run it as an administrator, then go in, once you have it up and running, let me pull it up, then you can come over here and where it shows your plugins, let me pull this up. File, install plugins, right from here, to uncheck it, then recheck it. All right? Right now, I'm not logged in as an administrator. So when I do this, it's going to tell me, or I'm sorry, it's going to say I have to run as an administrator. So make sure you run it as an administrator first, then uncheck it, and then immediately check it back again, or install it, and you'll be good to go. All right? Um, you know, Rick, it's funny. I had the opposite. I noticed it took faster for it to boot up than um, the Luminar 4 did. So it, it, it may be differences in machines. All right. Awesome. Well, guys, any other questions? I'll give it a couple of seconds. Good. I mean, as you can obviously tell, we're extremely excited. We've been working on this for a long time. The user manual, which is part of our job, my job, it'll be up um, by the 15th. You'll be able to click inside the software. And if you need help, just go right to the user manual and all the information will be in there. And what's really cool about it is it's a living, breathing document, meaning like that little uh, trick I showed you with Windows, stuff like that 
if, if we notice support, the support team is getting questions constantly saying, um, hey, I can't install my plugin, they'll come to us, I'll create a video for it or do what I just did, and then we'll pop it right into the user manual. So it works out really good, all right? Every time. Awesome. Good, Michael. Man, Michael talk, asked a question if it will show like when to use Luminar 4, when to use Luminar AI, <coughs> and mixing the two, that, that could be also a, that will also be another topic we can cover. All right? Well, guys, thank you so much. I'm going to get back to making sure the user guide is perfect to, to ready for launch. And I make sure we see you guys tomorrow to watch Luminar Live. I mean, I'm excited to see with all the talents that we have coming in, what they have to say about Luminar, and then they're going to show some of their tutorials on there. All right? Well, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next coffee break.